I am really excited for this interview. Uh, uh, we have two of the members of Sweden Unlimited, um, of three that had previously been a band. Um, and I would love to hear the origin story behind Sweden Unlimited, the agency. Well, you know, Steve, that um, Richard is multi-talented, but because you guys were in a band together too. Yes, we you were. In the nerd together? Or the nerd, the nerd yeah. yeah. The so, nerd. Right, actually, I met Richard right around that time when, when he was singing in the Nerve, and um, I just always wanted to start a band. I was uh, approaching 30 and had never had a band before. So we, um, we started a, a band with my sister and, and Richard, and we called ourselves Sweden. And that was really just because um, we really wanted to make records and we wanted to be in the S um, section at the record shop at other music. So we went to be next to like the Smiths and Stereo Lab and Spiritualize and all these bands that were S bands. So a friend of ours just thought Sweden worked. Um, and it, it, we liked it because it's like, even though it's a country, like if you say it over and over, you kind of start to lose the meaning of what it is. It just kind of starts sounding like a, a word or a sound. And we, we felt like we, sound in Sweden, um, so it, it worked really well. And then, um, yeah, a few years into it, we started uh, just tinkering with um, websites, started just teaching ourselves Flash and Photoshop and um, HTML. And actually your friend, John Wolfington, we were just talking about that, um, got us our first real job, our first client. So he was working for like, one of these very early um, dot coms that was like all about like an animated girl named Vivian Lives. And he was the art director there. So he, um, we quickly in one weekend taught ourselves Flash and uh, that got hired on Monday. And that was kind of like the start of our careers. And there goes Alex. Our <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. John Wolfington was also in the nerve. So three, so three people from the nerve are still involved right. with Sweden Unlimited. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> that is crazy, yeah. But back then it was such like a wild west and like you, there was like hardly anyone working in digital. Um, so like literally we taught ourselves how to like bounce a ball in, in Flash and show that to the, the owner of the site. And she was like, oh my God, you guys are amazing. You're hired. So it was like really easy to kind of fake it till you make it. <laughs> Back then it's a little harder now, but at the same time, um, there's so many tools out there now to kind of get people doing what we do that it, the barrier to you know kind of entrance is really is really low so it's a lot more competition back then it was it was like us or nobody <laughs> right now it, now it wasn't really you or nobody it was just you or nobody in your industry right i mean can can you talk a, a little bit more about you know the transition from uh, bouncing a ball for a client to building <laughs> a successful agency in new york that that serves some of the biggest fashion brands that there are. Yeah, I mean, we already were in the kind of fashion world, uh, different capacities, you know, helping. Uh, I was got kind of club promoting, if you can believe that, or the music and uh, or in the art world, you know, so we knew a lot of people in the fashion world and Alex and Asia, of course, were also modeling. So, um, and uh, I was like part of this sort of fashion, I guess, design group. Um, so we knew a lot of people. We throw fashion parties and fashion shows and sort of knew everyone in the downtown scene. So it was kind of a low barrier to be like, hey, do you want me to do your website? You know, and <laughs> like, uh, sure. You know, like, so someone like Built by Wendy, who was like, uh, you know, at our age, um, uh, had a little startup business selling shirts in the store. So, um, so we did, that was one of the first websites we did. And then there was like Pixie Yates, all these little young designers that, you know, had, were selling things different places, I don't even know where, but we would help them build their first e-commerce sites for, for really, for nothing, you know, for like $1,200. <laughs> um, but then we knew, we also knew Stephen Allen, who was pretty established. And, you know, it was kind of like, just sort of asked them, hey, you're at a party. We can help you make a website if you want. And he's like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> you know, so it wasn't like pitching or competing with a bunch of agencies like it is now. Um, mm -hmm. 
you know, and I think that got us kind of a little little recognition where um, where uh, a real brand like Dan von Furstenberg had heard of us. Uh, you know, who is a who's someone that makes websites that's in the fashion world, which was rare. There were a lot of companies that made websites, of course, but there were these kind of bro grammars, you know, and um, and you know they inject fashion. Uh, luxury aesthetic so like we were like d ones that would do that you know even there were just three or four people uh working in that realm mm -hmm. uh so you know we did land a kind of a big international client Diane von Furstenberg to do her website you know and I think that really propelled us into getting more real brands in that world yeah and then like after that um a lot that usually you have that one client who kind of is like the seal of approval and once you've done that project then everyone starts calling Mm -hmm. So after that, we started just working with like every brand you could think of from like, you know, big, big ones like, like Michael Kors to kind of great, you know, European luxury brands like Long Ben to, you know, a lot of makeup brands. I'm um, doing stuff with Dusty Lauder, Cody, and it kind of just world, uh, the um, word travels really fast. And then it just, all of a sudden you have an agency. <laughs> Certainly never set out to have one, but it just sort of happened. So, right, at what point did you sort of know that this was what you were going to do? You know, I mean, you had been making money other ways before and suddenly, yeah. you know, just it just organically happened that way for you. Yeah, I mean, I think it's like, it is organic. Uh, you know, we were dabbling with a lot of different things. Like Richard's done a million different jobs in the past. Um, now, it's funny, the people we hire who are in their 20s, it's unbelievable how they have their careers all mapped out. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're making six figures at the age of 24 and, um, you know, really know exactly where they want to be at each age. For or us. so they think. What's that? <laughs> or so they think. Or so they think, <laughs> yes. But um, it's, it's weird. But uh, for us, it was just like, wow, we can actually make money doing this. Because this was like the 90s New York. It's, it was really hard to do something creative and make money. Um, design is such a commodity now, like design, there's such a market for designers now, but back then, if you think about it, there wasn't that much to design. There was like printed things and signs, or really, if you said you were a designer, people automatically thought you were a fashion designer. It just wasn't, graphic design was not what it is now. It's like sort of like infused its way into everything we do, you know, things we buy at the grocery store now are designed so incredibly well it's it's sort of like democratized um like i think design is just such a democ democratized um thing now that everyone expects it so but at the time we were just excited that we were actually getting paid to do something that we thought was fun and cool um probably as soon as we started having like so much work that we were just constantly working all day and all night which we were happy doing because we were young, but as soon as we realized that it was um, it was just not going to happen just with the three of us, we started hiring um, employees, and that's when it changed a lot. Because like once you are just a um, like a sort of craftsman, and you start and then you start having employees, and you become like a teacher and a business owner, it's completely different. So a lot of growing pains there. That's a, that's a beautiful answer. That's exactly what I was hoping you would talk about is, is how that happens. Um, and if you're to put this in the context of history, um, you know, like if you go back to Lou Reed writing jingles for a jingle company in Midtown, um, that's kind of what it was like for designers. You could work for somebody else or not work. That was it. Um, and, uh, and then, like you said, it became, you know, fast forward to now, it's very democratized and you can put up an Etsy page and everybody thinks you're a designer. Um, exactly. uh, so how do you, how's the business changed? You know, what, what are the challenges of running a business in that world? And also running a business that is on the kind of spine that separates design from tech, you know, where you have to infuse your work with technology and, and hire technology outsource mm -hmm. partners or bring them on board. You know, what's yeah. it like now? Uh, how's it changed since we started out? Yeah, um, well, I think we just said like, it's uh, a lot more open for a lot, a lot of, the barrier is a lot lower to start a company, right? Like mm -hmm. everyone, two, two, two people can kind of start up a comp spin up a company really quickly. 
can go to LegalZoom, they can go find templates, they can find process, like super fast. They can find a website to make a path <laughs> table, Steve. Right, right. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, that's all kind of ingrained in people and they kind of see it so much, they kind of, uh, they instinctively know exactly what to do. And like we have young people know exactly what to do in a way and they can make it happen really quickly. Uh, you know, for us, it was, uh, we were maybe entrepreneurial, but we came from this, you know, X gen kind of world where you kind of built yourself up however you can, you know, make, make up something in this world, you know, make up whatever you want. We're going to start a band. We're going to start a fashion collective. We're going to start yeah. a art gallery. <laughs> you know, um, it was, it was sort of just vision driven in that way. Yeah. Uh, but it was very hard to like figure out how we're going to do this, you know, how we're going to get the tech. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's so true. I, I think that just not just design being so democratized, but like business and, and entrepreneurship, it's it like, like Richard said, two people can start an agency like that. When I think back to, to the, I think it was the year 2000 or 2001, when we got our first check written to us and we were joking around that we were called Sweden. We were like Sweden Limited, Sweden Design Group and someone wrote us a check. And I literally was like, I don't know what to do with this check because this company doesn't really exist. <laughs> and it, it seems so silly now um, how easy it is to just, Go to the bank and you know get a D or go get a DBA, but all of that stuff was so far away from uh, from our kind of um, you know immediate knowledge. You know, we both went to art school, so we it, it was so much learning. Um, there wasn't really a website that you could just find everything on. Like we had to, we actually had to literally go to the courthouse to to make our our, um, our company's DBA. Like it was very weird. We had to wait in line. Yeah. With a lot of like, you know, like immigrants who yep. were setting up like all different kinds of like dry cleaners or whatever. And then we were like, we want to, we have like a check with a name on it, but it's not really our name yet. So it just seems so much easier now. So I think that people can really focus on the work. All that business stuff is sort of like plug and play. But I think for us, that, that business stuff was so hard and, and we, had to, we had to work so hard on figuring it out that it took away from, you know, just doing the work. At so, least for us though, because we were from the art music world. So I'm sure exactly. there were business people back, business school people back then and you know, <laughs> exactly. we definitely didn't know how. Exactly. <laughs> but, but, but business school people, you know, uh, all of that stuff is very plug and play and easier now, but it doesn't get you the clients. So sure. your art and music background got you the clients and separated you from really a lot of people. And, you know, operating in today's environment, that's, that's really a big problem. I mean, you know, yeah. you can only say, oh, a development firm in India will make this on the cheap, but, you know, that does, that's not really enough. That's you can't exactly. Go to, and that you can't go to a major fashion brand with that. That's definitely, yeah. And to answer part of the question you had before, um, we, we keep saying, we keep talking about how things have become commoditized, websites, e-commerce, for sure. I mean, the sites that people can spin up on Squarespace right now in 10 minutes are sites that we used to charge a lot of money to build. And we were, I mean, that was our look. And it's funny to see all the good design that we were doing in those early days are now it is so accessible. Those, those, we look at those templates and we're like, wow, these look amazing. Like I would never hire someone to custom build something when I can just do it here for a lot less. So it, it caused us to shift um, the type of work we were taking on. So we definitely have um, shifted to working with um, bigger projects. So a lot of our, you know, while we will do e-commerce and Shopify, they are with brands that don't want a template, don't want something um, definitely more creative and more thought through and they want um, our experience that a lot of these little two person agencies just don't have. They might have the ability to do coding and spin up a theme and make something look pretty, but they don't have, you know, not just the experience, but just the ability to have a really grown up conversation with these clients and really talk about their business and their brand and some of the trends that we've seen in the past or right now. But so a lot of a lot of the agencies that are just really focused on the product, which is the website, they're sort of missing out on being more strategic partners, which we're able to be. 
Right. That I mean, that's the way I see Sweden as well. It's it's a strategic partner to a brand to create something that's really going to make a difference because all of the other, uh, it is so easy to make a nice looking website. They all look the same and it's hard to distinguish. Do you think any of that uh, design was ripped off from you? Oh, uh, no, I, you know, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't want to take that uh, claim, you know. Uh, maybe like kind of, it's just stuff's in the air, you know. I think there's a collective unconscious, you know, but, um, you know, there's probably are people I've heard say, oh, I look at your site a lot and you know, maybe they don't consciously copy it, but they really sort of set the tone for some like a fashion brand agency looks like, you know, um, so I think they do look to us, but you know, everyone, the stuff happens kind of organically. It's like osmosis, you know? you know? it's kind <laughs> of like music scenes, like, you know, when New York has like a music scene and all of a sudden everyone's playing electro clash and you're kind of like, where, where did that come from? Like when we started our band, we were really inspired by the music that we were listening to in the 80s. So we were, you know, inspired by a lot of like New Order and, you know, Depeche Mode, Jesus Mary Chain. And then all of a sudden in New York, we look around and I'm like, oh, everyone's playing keyboards. Everyone's, you know, kind of doing weird drum machines and that sort of thing. And whereas we were like, we're, didn't we just come up with that on our own? But really it was just in the air and everyone was kind of coming up with it. Or maybe we all were at a party and someone was playing, you know, like an, an old Depeche Mode album and everyone was like, wow, what's, what if synths came back? Because you know how it, it's like, in the late 90s, people weren't really thinking about the 80s anymore. So I think there, it's just in the air. And it's the same thing with websites. And I, I mean, I really think that you have been a, a cultural leader of that um, in many ways. And, uh, and uh, you know, your, your understanding of what is culturally interesting and what's cool right now, I think is, uh, is really critical to your success and has been a big part of your success. Um, yeah, definitely. If you could give any give a, a new entrepreneur in the design business advice now, uh, what would it be? Um, I was going to make a joke. I guess I am, but like, uh, don't do it. <laughs> get, get a real job. <laughs> yeah. Manager, little two person agency, uh, but you know. Again, I, I feel hypocritical because that, that's exactly what we did. You know, yeah. I was like, I'm going to start an agency. <laughs> um, and it's going to be out of the name and the website and the look and feel. And, um, but uh, so it's a bit hypocritical. Uh, you know, it's more the merrier, sure. But just be careful because it's, you know, most companies kind of fail in the first two years. Uh, you know, I think there's a lot to learn from working with experienced people, you know, try to have a mentor, um, you know, try to get as much exposure from other people, you know, uh, is the best yeah. learning. Uh, you know, again, like, um, you know, we, I had a life, a career of other things we're doing that I think that led up to uh, our experiences doing this, you know, store design, music, art gallery, production, making t-shirts, you know, photography, know photography. Yeah, photography. Yeah. Um, and you keep doing that stuff, right? I mean, that's that's part of part of what's happening, right? Well, you, the band's you know, not around anymore, but and we have children, so things definitely change a lot as you get older. <laughs> but you know, I think another thing um, that I I think is really important in and with you know companies coming up is like to really be careful about the relationships that you make with other companies as partners. Um, don't burn bridges. I've seen that happen quite a lot um, where, you know, um, we've done it in our early days when we thought like we were invincible and we never were going to need anybody. And, you know, like when you're um, just like at the, on top of the world, you kind of just act very selfishly maybe. But now that we've been in business for a long time, I see other um, people that we've worked with, uh, partners, um, you know, just not appreciate any kind of help that we are giving them and do things that are really burning a bridge. I think it's really important to just remember not to get ahead of yourself. It always feels good when it feels good. <laughs> when business is great, you feel like it's like there's never gonna be a downturn, but we have gone through so many ups and downs and that changes within weeks sometimes. Like you can have like a week where you're like, how in the world are we gonna continue on? And, and you know, we have like, 
20 people we need to keep employed and it's really scary. And then it can completely change um, for the better. But just, I think it's being humble and just always be thinking about the future and not, you know, not burning bridges or, you know, um, firing clients or like pissing clients off when you know you might need them later as a reference. So we've made that's every a, mistake in the book. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really, really, really good advice. Um, as, as a last question, um, would you, what would you recommend that somebody pick up and read or watch uh, who was interested in following in your path? We are, we, there's this book, Traction, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we're like a series of books that uh, help that sort of explain um, yes. in narrative and also in, in like a more technical manual, this EOS, uh, entrepreneur, Entrepreneurial Operating System. So uh, that was really uh, eye-opening to us because it really sounded exactly like all the things that we've encountered in our uh, career as an agency. And it also has this sort of whole uh, methodology of how to run, a, uh, how to be an entrepreneur and how to run a business. Um, there's a few books, Traction, and what else was there? Um, well, um, there's also another book called The E-Myth that was really good. Um, but back to Traction, what's really, I think what the, I think we did the whole training and all that, and a lot of it, what maybe was, you know, a waste of time, some of it. <laughs> and some of it isn't really right for the type of company that we are being an agency, not like a, a company that sells cogs. But um, there was some really interesting um, things that we learned about how to like do a, a weekly meeting. And it sounds so obvious, but it was so eye-opening to us, like having things to like really measure and really like have things that we need to go through every week that's the same every week. We were, because we come from creative backgrounds, we were doing all of our meetings sort of like free form. And it was just like talk and talk and go in circles and, and keep going and, and then sometimes go on beyond um, you know, the hour. And it gets very messy and you don't really get anywhere. So if you kind of really um, make things that you're measuring and look at those things every week and have like a list of to-dos and go through them and hold each other accountable to those to-dos, those probably sound so obvious, but that was not anything we were doing for like the first 16 years of our existence. Um, we also did a cool training program called Agency Agile, which was really great. I really recommend for, um, for uh, agencies and it really teaches you um, how to really scope a project. I think we've made so many mistakes in the past um, under scoping projects and then getting ourselves into trouble once we really get what it is we've been signed on to do. So it's, um, that's probably been the thing that has really moved the needle in a positive way for us. Once we got, you know, acclimated to a lot of more typical industry-wide tools, it definitely did help a lot, but it doesn't replace instinct. I still think um, people hide behind those tools. Um, instinct is really important, but it's nice to have the tools as backup. All right. Well, thank you. Um, I think we should probably call it quits. Um, okay. <laughs> this has been a really wonderful interview, um, very personable and shows how you can just organically grow a business out of your passion. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you very much. Bye guys. Bye, thanks guys. Bye. See you. Bye. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you.